Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. Schuler Ruler here again. Uh, this is the second part in kind of a series dealing with doing branch circuit calculations, selecting conductors and overcurrent devices. In a previous video, we looked at doing a branch circuit with a non-continuous calculation. In this one, we are going to look at what happens when we have a continuous rated load. Okay, so the deal with the continuous load is that we know that this thing is going to be drawing a certain amount of current for a large amount of time, more than a one hour in a two hour period for under 225 amps, and more than a three hour in a six hour period for more than 225 amps. Okay, so because of that heat or that conductor being, or sorry, rather current being drawn all the time, that heat is always going to be present, specifically inside the overcurrent device, where there's a thermal component that could start to react as that regular current gets close to the trip setting on the breaker. So what we eventually need to do is essentially upsize the breaker but to do that, we're going to go through and do a calculation to upsize our conductor as well. So um, we're going to start with our, again, we're going to start with an electrical panel that's supplying out here. We're going to say this is a, we're going to start with 8,000 watt load. We're going to say it's 240 volt, single phase, 75 degree termination temperatures. And in our panel, we're also going to use 75 degree termination temperatures as well. So again, what we're going to do is size our branch circuit conductor as well as the overcurrent device that protects it. Okay, so starting with our 8000 watt load at 240 volts, the first thing we need to determine is what is the actual ampassery or the demand of the load. So starting down here, we're going to say we have 8000 watts divided by our nominal voltage of 240 volts gives us a load current of 33.333 amps. Okay, so I know that through this conductor, I'm going to see 33.333 amps. The issue with this 33.333 amps, because we did not state on this load that it was continuous versus non-continuous, we have to assume, worst case scenario, that this is a continuous load and it's going to be running for, again, more than that one hour and a two hour period. And because of that, as we start to get close to the max rating of a breaker, it's going to start tripping that thermal element in the breaker. So what we're going to do is apply an 80% correction factor to this to kind of artificially inflate the size of our load so that we can choose the right size conductor that inevitably gives us the correct size overcurrent. Okay, so again, as in a previous video, when we start a branch circuit, we are going to ask ourselves, number one, is this continuous or non? And we have determined in this video that it is a non, or sorry, rather a continuous load based off of the fact that it's not given information. So the next question we would ask ourselves, now that we've determined that it is a continuous load, is the equipment rated for 80% or 100%? If it's rated for 100%, you can load it right up to 100% and it shouldn't be an issue with that thermal element. However, because it doesn't tell us in the question again, we would have to assume worst case scenario, which is that the equipment is only rated for 80%. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to assume that it is 80% rated equipment. And because of that, we're going to apply that 80% correction factor. Now what we could do is go to our table 2. And again, we're using table 2 because it doesn't tell me anything. So we're going to assume it's RW90, XLPE. We're going to assume these are copper conductors. We are going to assume that it is three conductors in conduit. Okay, we're going to go to table two. Eventually, what we could do is go table two, and again, 4006, we're going to keep those lowest termination temperatures in mind. In the 75 degree column, I could select conductor ampacities and just start multiplying them by 0.8 to figure out which one would carry the load, but there's an easier way to do it. We can just take that load of 33.333 amps, save ourselves some steps, divide it by 0.8. What that does is gives me that artificially inflated minimum ampacity where we can take it straight to table two and select a conductor. So now that we have our 41.67 amps, we're going to go table two, 75 degree column, and we're going to size our conductor based off that 41.67 amps, which in this case should work out to a number eight aug, which is good for 50 amps. Okay. As with the previous video, now that we have this conductor sized, our branch circuit conductor size, now we can use this number to go to 
First of all, 14104 sub rule 1, we have to remember, tells us that I'm going to size it based off the ampacity of the conductor, which if it doesn't exist at table 13, I'm allowed to go up to the next available size. So let's check out table 13. Table 13 says there is a 50 amp overcurrent, so that's what we're going to use to size our overcurrent, or that's what our overcurrent will be, is a 50 amp overcurrent. Okay, so again, when we're doing these branch circuit calculations, step one should always be, is it a continuous or non-continuous operation? Okay, that's dependent on what the load is doing, how much time is it running for? Okay, the second question, is it 80% rated equipment or 100% rated equipment? That will help us determine whether or not we're gonna apply this 80% correction factor to our load to again inflate to a higher minimum ampacity to select a larger conductor, which leads to a larger 50 amp overcurrent. Now there is another step that you can do just to double check and make sure the overcurrent you've selected will not trip with this continuous load. What we can do is take that 50 amps and multiply it by the 0.8 and what that'll do is give us what that overcurrent is rated for at continuous loading, right? So we could have a 40 amp load on there running 100% of the time and it won't affect that thermal element. In this case, our load is 33.333 amps. We're nowhere near the 40 amps calculated from that. Again, that che that's just kind of a, a quick check for that, but if you're doing this step where you do the load divided by 0.8 to select the conductor, you shouldn't run into that problem anyways. Hopefully this has helped. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.